Welcome to Bartolomeo Meo, Mugiwara fans. The option that I'm bringing in this video seems to fit, and yet, no one will believe in it at first because it seems to be irrefutable arguments against it. We are going to discuss them and put on the table a possible end for Onigashima's war that is so spectacular that my height has raised in a way that I don't know how I'm going to be able to wait. We can see in Wano how a plot about Soros lineage is coming up. We all agree that the boat that Oda mentioned in a SBS which left Wano decades ago and ended in the East Blue is the origin of Shimotsuki village, which shares its name with Ryuma and Yasuya. As you might know, Ryuma is an ancient samurai who became legendary after beheading a dragon that had people in Wano frightened. Ryuma and Soro look very alike, which opens the door to speculate about some blood link, but even if there is none, there is already a bond between them. Soro wears his sword, Soshui, that was handed over by Ryuma's zombie when he was defeated by him. That zombie was not as strong as the real Ryuma because it was living with Brook's shadow. But he ended by recognizing Zoro as worthy of wearing his katana. So we have a link that Oda has created between Zoro and Ryuma, and we still don't know how far it goes, but wouldn't be logic for you if Zoro becomes a legendary samurai in Wano as well? Since right now there is also a dragon having people in Wano frightened, this seems to lead to a conclusion where Zoro ends up beheading this dragon. But this dragon is Keido. So even if clues seem to make this outcome logical, why is it so hard to believe? Well, most likely, the first inconvenient that will come to mind will be Kaido is too strong. Then, we can also think about patterns in this series. Luffy always fights the strongest, and he also always keeps his promises, and has promised to end Kaido. Besides, as this reason seems to be too strong, Oda already seems to have done this tribute with this image where Zoro hits a dragon in Panhazar. But this action hasn't had any meaning for the story. It was just witnessed by three of his nakamas and they never talk about it. That was an artificial dragon and cannot be compared with the feat of Ryuma. About Luffy always keeping his promises, several things can be said. Zoro killing Keido does not necessarily mean he has a one-on-one -on -one duel with the Jonko. You know the saying, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, Keido always wins. Zoro can have help. Even Hawkins' car that can make someone exceed his limits, and we now think is going to be for Luffy, it could be an upbeat for Zoro. It could also be that Luffy fights Keido before, but even if he doesn't, his right hand killing Keido is not keeping his promise? When he makes this promise to Momonosuke, he's already speaking as captain of his crew, and it's like this that he forms the alliance with the samurai. Besides, if we pay attention on the promise itself, I think it is the first time he does not say something like kicking the villain's ass, but he's going to take his head. What a coincidence. What does seem clear is Keido must die. Although Straw has done kill their enemies, everything is ready for this one in particular doesn't survive the war. He was introduced as someone who seeks to end his life, so in order to soften any sort of violence by the Straw Hats, Oda has put killing Keido as something similar to doing him a favor. So the path to this death has already been created. We still have the hardest points to answer, because Keido is indeed too strong, the strongest creature in the world. We've seen how he received the best attacks from Luffy as if nothing, and defeat him in one blow. If that's the gap of power with Luffy, what is that gap with Zoro? It looks like a huge difference in power for reaching that level in just a few weeks. But on one hand, we have Luffy's defeat seems to have trick. I already bet for Keido having Kairoseki on his maze, which would explain that he ended up with Luffy in Force GR just by touching him. And on the other hand, we have we really ignore Soros' real power after the time skip. Oda has been hiding it from us, and we've got no duel so far to use as a reference. Soro could deal with his enemies easily in Fishman Island and Pun Hazard. What was difficult in his fight with Pika and Rosa was to find a way to hit the rival directly. But once he could, Pika was defeated in the in the first blow. The most similar to a swarm and duel he had has been is his recent fight with Killer, but we couldn't know the difference between them because another character was there just to continuously attack Zoro from behind. 
Honestly, we don't know where is Soros limit. In previous videos, I've already mentioned that there are high odds of for Soros coming from the time skip as the best swordman in the world. He won't have a better chance to defeat Mihawk than being trained by him during two years with the main purpose of defeating him. That's what Soro asked to Mihawk, to train him to defeat him. If Queen had defeated Soro 2000 times, Mihawk might have defeated him even more. But I think we'll have a flashback of the last duel where Soro wins. I think it's probable too that he got the scar in the eye in that victory and that would be his greatest pride. Who else could make that bond to Soro other than Mihawk in that island? If all this were true, the gap of power with Keido is not that large. Notice, when Keido was introduced, it was standing out that he couldn't be cut. Blades got broken. If Zoro surpasses Mihawk and is able to cut the diamond, which is one of his goals, he will be able to cut Keido too. And with this, he becomes the, in the most suitable man to defeat him. Although these arguments are probably not enough to fully convince you, at least they should be enough to see there are ways to take the story to there. And now, the argument that is the strongest for me is left. Luffy always fights and defeats the strongest enemy. This is unbreakable, because what is the alternative? If Soro defeats Keido, what about Luffy? Does he fight just a calamity? We cannot have this situation because, as Soro mentioned on Fishman Island, then Luffy should step down. This point is what has forced me to extend this theory, because there is only one way of making it compatible. Luffy must fight against someone stronger than Kato. And who could be this rival if Kato is the strongest creature? Well, that could be an old title and could be others that are stronger than him by now. I think we could all agree Blackberry is now a more powerful foe than Kato. So that's my answer. I've been looking for any sign of Blackbird spiders to be already in Wano during all this second act. The reason for this comes from that break between Act 1 and 2, where, when we all expected to go to the Revely, Oda drove us to Blackbird Pirates' location instead. And it was Kurohige who gave us information about what was happening at the Revely. But basically, what Blackbird did in that break was showing us two new Devil Fleets on his crew, and make it clear he was aware of what was happening in Wano, where, literally, he said the fight for the throne has already started. So the main reason I can think for being given that information at that time is because it is going to be used. Actually, these two Devil's Free powers are ideal to enter one on notice. Katarina Devon can be anyone. I even thought she might be Big Mom when she appeared at the beach with that drawing error showing tattoos in both arms, but now it's clear it isn't. But she will surprise everyone being some other character sooner or later. Blackbird's crew can be invisible now too. Recall Absalom made invisible the entire ship where he was with Mori and company, so I'm still paying attention to any detail can point there there. And there are still questions needing an answer, right? Like. What about Big Mon? Others might wonder, what about Sanji? These two questions seem to complement each other because, again, we've got a plot for these two characters. We don't know what has happened with Jerma Double Six, but we are thinking nothing good for them, aren't we? We can bring the argument about the big gap of power again, but the right suite is a great power for Sanji, and besides, this fight will make big sense to the entire whole cake arc. I have a video published with a theory in which I'm saying that the straw has have already done all that is necessary to defeat Big Mo. The main factor is the wedding cake, the protagonist of that second half of that arc. We were expecting a big effect on Big Mo when she ate it, but instead it just helped with her hunger and made her ready to come back to fight the ones that were helping straw has to escape. As I pointed then, I don't think this topic ended there and like this. I think Sanji has got a special card to play against Big Mom through that Kate and her amnesia that hides the truth about what happened with Mother Caramel and her friends, that can end Jonko's will to fight or even live. Another of these coincidences here is an amnesia is what is preventing Big Mom to know he ate her loved ones, and this character has appeared in Guano precisely with an amnesia. So it seems that Sanji has the key to unlock all this. What do you think? Wouldn't it be spectacular having the monster trio fighting three Yonkos? 
don't you see the chance that Thoro ends up beheading Keido as a climax to a supernova battle without Luffy against Keido? Notice Oda has clearly made an effort in Udon to show us Kid on a level similar to Luffy's, and has led with an even stronger grudge to Keido than Bane in prison. Remark his words when leaving Udon. You saw what happened to my partner. So Kit and Killer must be in that fight. I've noticed too, Hawkins and X Drake have always appeared in one or leading a group of beast pirates. Where are their crews? So it could be a reason for them for finally taking the side against Kaido here. I know I'm not mentioning Apu, but as I explained in the video about Brooking Wano, he makes a perfect rival for him, so I think this fight should take place. But it could happen before the war, and Apu could be in the group against Kaido later. And this leaves us with the rest of Straw Hats, let's not forget Jinbe, and even Lo and her pirates to help with the crews of the Jonkos. This ending also matches the clues that Oda has been giving us in the latest interviews. He said he still didn't know how Luffy was going to defeat Kaido, and it could be because it's not going to be him. Oda has also said Wano's war is going to leave Marine for war as nothing, and that the end of One Piece is closer than we expect. The way to make the end closer is by joining what we think is going to happen in two separate arcs into one, Wano and the fight against Blackbird's pirates. Having three Jonkos with all their crews fighting the supernova, the samurai, the Ming in Sulon form, etc., well, it's, I'm excited just by thinking about it and create so much hype that I'm going to look for a way to induce a coma upon myself until then, to avoid being consumed by this waiting. If there is no video next month, it's because I've achieved it. See ya!